Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless. This is Israel United in Christ, and we're bringing you 15 minutes with the captain. Today, I'm your captain, Captain Zakai, and I'm with Officer Ira. Today, what we're going to discuss is what? The law, the dietary law, okay? What you can and cannot eat, because guess what? Our people, you so called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians, you Israelites, you believe you can eat anything you want. Why? Because you were taught this in the Christian church. You were taught this all over. They're feeding you shrimp, lobster, crab, and all of that. But a lot of you in the churches, where did you get this idea from that you can eat everything? Because when we speak to you, you say, oh, the dietary law is done away with. Why? Because you're reading the book of Acts, chapter 10, and you got that misconstrued because your pastor's what? His mind ain't right. He don't really know the Bible. So give me that, Acts chapter 10. We're going to start in verse 11. Watch this, y'all. We're going to read 11 through 14. Because a lot of you pull the scripture and say, this is about food. Let's find out. Read. The book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 11. And saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners. Matter of fact, start in verse 10. Verse 10. And he became very hungry. Who's the he? The he here is Peter. Read on. And would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Read. But Peter said, Now so, Lord, for I, ha for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Right. So Peter saw what? He saw a bunch of animals being brought down to the vision that the, that the Lord was sending them. And he said, I've never eaten anything common or unclean because the Lord said what? Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But let's see if it's talking about food. Give me uh, verse 28. Starting 26. Verse 26. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Right, because now this is the chapter talking about Cornelius. Those of you who don't know, Cornelius is not a Roman. He's a Roman citizen, but he's an Israelite. So when Peter went to see Cornelius, this is what happened. Read. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an, un an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company. Or come unto one of another nation. What's the other nation? To, to come to a man that is a Jew to come into one of another nation is not talking about any other nation. It's talking about the nation of Israel, which was known as Northern Kingdom. Peter was of the Southern Kingdom. So when you Peter was saying, hey, we're not supposed to be seen with you anymore because there was a split when you read the book of Kings chapter 12. But read on. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. What did she shouldn't he call what? That I should not call any man common or unclean. The scripture says you should not call a man common or unclean. Not a piece of food. This has nothing to do with food. The Lord is trying to show that what? The northern kingdom or the scattered Israelites who did not grow up under the law. That what? They were now being pulled back into the fold. That's when you read in Romans about what? Okay? Grafted in. That's what that's talking about. Okay? So now, let me get the book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 19. Because the law of food was always in effect, even before Moses. All right, we're going to prove this to you, brothers and sisters. All right, but what? We got to read and understand the Bible. That's where you get it from. Okay, give me Genesis chapter 6 and verse 19. Watch this, y'all. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 19. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark. Stop. Two of every sort. What does that mean? That means a male and a female. It's going gonna, it's gonna to reveal itself right now. Read. To keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female, mm. of fowls after, they, after their kind, right. and of cattle after their kind, right. of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee, to keep them alive. Stop. So the Lord wanted to keep what? All of these animals alive through the, through the, uh, through the flood. So he had to take male and female of each animal that was on the earth that he wanted to preserve. But watch this. Read chapter 7 now. Okay, we're going to read 1 through 8. Come on. Genesis 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thine house into the ark. For, for, thee, for thee have I seen righteousness before me in the generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven. Stop. For every clean beast you shall take to thee 
by sevens. You understand that? Back then, it was already known that there was clean and unclean animals. Only today, through what? Through slavery, you understand? White supremacy and pure stupidity, do we not understand that there's clean and unclean animals? Read on, bro. The male and his female. Come on. And of beasts that are not clean by two. The male and his female. Come on. Of fowls also of the, of the air by sevens. The male and the female. To keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Read. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Now I want you to jump to verse 8. Verse 8. Of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. Read on. There went in two and two unto Noah, into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. Right. So you had what? Seven clean, right? Seven clean beasts, and you had two of the unclean coming into the ark. All right? So now, let's go to, I want to hit up Leviticus 11, right? Because in Leviticus 11 now is giving us what? The actual law. I wanted to read those things before to let you know that the law was already out there. This was in effect in Israel, but now Leviticus 11 is what? That written law to show us, hey, this is what's clean and unclean. Give me Leviticus 11. Matter of fact, read me 46 and 47, and then we're going to jump back. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 46. This is the law of the beast, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and and the clean to make a difference between the unclean and the clean come on and between the beast that may be eaten come on and the beast that may not be eaten how clear is that what can be eaten which is the clean and what cannot be eaten which is what the unclean give me back to early in leviticus you know what i want give me verse 7 leviticus 11 and verse 7 and the swine though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed yet he cheweth not the cud you heard that that swine that pig he does what? It says that his foot is what? It's cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. What happens? He is unclean to you. You can't eat that. Read on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. You shall not eat pig pork rinds. Um, uh, what's that? Chitlins. Okay. Chuletas. Okay, which is pork chops. To you pork chop eating pastors and the rest of you brothers who, and sisters who don't want to live the life of the Lord. And deal with these scriptures. Read on. And their carcass shall ye not touch. The carcass shall you not touch. It says don't even deal with the carcass. Read on. They are unclean to you. These shall ye, excuse me, these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever had fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses an abomination. What is an abomination? Abomination is what? When the Lord hates something. He hates when we eat what? The unclean foods. Get, but now I want to talk about the clean real quick with you and the cut. I want to just deal with you with the cut. Don't worry about that for now. Okay. In verse 7 it says, The swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Give me what I gave to you. We're gonna, what is chewing the cud? What does that mean? That's the problem, brothers and sisters. We don't have an understanding on what words mean or what terms mean. Okay. But we're going to learn today. Read. This is of CattleEmpire.net. When a cow first takes a bite, me, it chews just enough to moisten the food. Mm -hmm. Once swallowed, the food goes into the first section, section, the rumen. See that? There's one section of the cow's in uh, intestines or stomach called the rumen. What happens at that point? Where it mixes with the other acid digestive liquids mm. and it's softened. The softened food is called cud. The softened food is called cud, meaning what? It's regurgitated back. To the cow's mouth, he starts to chew again. Read. Small balls of food. Next, the rumen muscle sends the cut back up to the cow's mouth, mm -hmm. where it is re-chewed re and swallowed again. Come on. Where does it go? This time, going into the omosums. Right. The omosums, which is the second uh, compartment of the cow's stomach. And does what? 
it goes through its digestive system, right? Or, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Digestive system. And then what? Goes back up to the mouth and it's chewed again. Come on. This time going onto the omosum section of the stomach in order to squeeze out all the moisture. Mm. Finally, the food enters the last part, obosimus. Of the obosimus. St- I'm sorry to cut you. Obosimus, right? Where the process continues. The digestive process continues. Read on. Of the stomach, where it mixes with digestive juices and makes its way to the intestine to mm. be completely di- digested. You see that? That's called chewing the cud. What are we talking about? A filtration system, which the pig doesn't have. So all animals that have this filtration system, meaning chewing the cud for short, guess what? These are the animals that are clean. Okay? And of the, and of the fishes, uh, ones with uh, scales and fins... That's the filtration system. So a lot of us like to eat shark. We want to eat uh, catfish, crab, lobster. These are, these are animals that clean the sea. Okay, oysters and all that stuff. That's not to be eaten, brothers and sisters. I know when we go out, we, we say, hey, let's go to a, a seafood restaurant because we think that's the, uh, the delicacy. But no, these delicacies are actually against the Lord's uh, commandments. Give me Deuteronomy 14. Let me show you something. We're going to stay on this. Okay, what are we talking about? The dietary law that y'all brothers and sisters think is done away with. You so-called, you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians, you must learn this. You must learn these laws and live by them. That's how you get the kingdom. That's how you're saved. You, you know what I want out of 14, brother? You saw verse 3? Yeah. The book of Deuteronomy 14 and verse 3. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. Come on. These are the beasts which ye shall eat. These are the beasts which you shall eat. Come on. The ox. Ox tails. You love them. I love them. Read. The sheep. Come on. And the goat. Yes. The hart. And the roebuck. And the fallow deer. And the wild goat. And the pygard. And the wild ox. And the, and the chemwa. And every beast that part of the hoof. And cleaveth the hoof into two claws. And cheweth the cleaveth cut. Cleaveth the cliff into two claws. It's all right. Read on. And cheweth the cut among the beasts. That, that ye shall eat. You see that? That's just what we went over. Read the next part. I love this. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that, that chew the cud. Right. Because there's some animals that chew the cud, but you can't eat them. Watch this. Read. Okay. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the, the cloven hoof, as the camel. Right. So the camel, which has a cloven hoof and chews the cud, that you can't eat. Come on. And the hare, and the coney, for they chew the cud. But divide not the hoof. Right. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. Right. So again, let's let's. You have to chew. The animal has to be able, has to chew the cud as the process, but also has to have what be cloven footed. It can't just be parted, like say here the camel. All right. So these are the things that you have to learn and what we keep. It's not that hard. It's not that hard because you're not going to eat a camel anyway. Right. You're going to eat the cow. You're going to eat all the animals that that are clean unto you and stay away from that damn pig. Okay, and the rest of these animals out here. But I want to bring something out to you. But what else? A lot of you say that that's the Old Testament, right? We're reading from the Old Testament, are we not? Yes, sir. They say in the New Testament, it says something different. But when we go to, we read out of the New Testament in Acts, it's not saying anything about food. But then the person's going to say, hey, what about 1 Timothy chapter 4? Let's go there. Okay, let's go there to 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to deal with this. Because, again, some people get it misconstrued. They read, these, they read these chapters and they say, hey, obviously it's saying that we can eat anything that we want. Why? Because they're following after their lust. They want to eat the pig. They like pig, pork, bacon, and all of this garbage. But according to the book of the Most High in Christ, you do not eat this. And watch this. Read. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, mm. speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meat. So commanding to abstain from meat. So they think that's talking about, oh, oh, don't eat pork, don't eat this. That's not what that's talking about. This abstaining from meats is talking about you Catholic priests, talking about don't eat meat on a Friday during the, uh, the Lent season. Because we got to eat fish. That's, that's, that ain't got nothing to do with the Most High's laws. Read on. Which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And know the truth. What is the truth, brother? You see, we have to teach this Bible precept 
upon precept. The scriptures say, God hath created to be, uh, to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Not that you just give thanks over, oh, there's a piece of pork. Lord, please clean it that I can eat it. No, that's not what this is talking about. Read. Give me the truth. What does the truth mean? Psalms 119 and verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. That's what we just read. We read the dietary law. That's the truth. Okay, so that's what it's talking about. Read on. Let's go back. Give me verse 4. I'm sorry, verse 5. First Timothy 4 and verse 5. Stop right there. Matter of fact, read verse 4 because I want to point something out. Come on. Verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Stop. So now every creature of God is good. Ready to be what? Re uh, uh, if God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So now again. Give me thanks over this pork. But there's a colon here. Meaning what? The thought is still going on. The thought is still uh, uh, proceeding. Read verse 5. Verse 5. For it is sanctified by thy word of God. By the word of God. What is sanctified in the Bible? Give me John 17, 17. Precept must be upon precept. We're going to give you what sanctified means. Once you get the understanding of what sanctified means, what the truth means, then you're going to know that this is all talking about the laws of God. Give me that, brother. Come on. The book of John, chapter 17 and verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is the truth. You heard that? Thy word is the truth. Same thing we read about what? The truth here, that it's the law. That's what this is dealing with. It's talking about what? That all, everything of God is what? Is good. It is. A pig is good for what it's supposed to do. What does a pig do? Clean up. It's a garbage disposal. Just like many other animals, the crab, the lobster, the oysters, and all of these things. They're all good. They need to be here. The Lord set it up for a reason. To do what? To clean the oceans. For the pigs to clean up and different animals to clean the earth. You understand? That's what you call the ecosystem. These are all good things that the Lord put together, but not good for you to eat. You understand that, brothers and sisters? Now give me, um, and, and, and just, to, just to show you, uh, give me 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. We got a few more scriptures to go through, brothers and sisters, and then we're going to let you go. But y'all going to learn, thus saith the Lord. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, mm -hmm. and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Read. If any man defile the temple of God. You heard that? If any man defiles the temple of God. Come on. Him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You heard that, brothers and sisters? Holy temple. You get that? So you cannot be putting unholy foods within you. The law is holy. You understand? So when you're keeping the law and you're eating holy, that's how you keep your temple holy as well. No smoking and drugs and all of that, obviously. But this is part of it, okay? Defiling your temple with what? Bad food. That's why you come down with gout, high blood pressure, all of these things, because you're not eating right. OK, the Lord gave you the dietary law, but you don't want to keep it. And now you're getting sick. You're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. OK, so now watch this, brothers and sisters. There was times in the Bible where our people were being forced to deal with pork and they would have rather died than to do that. All right. Second Maccabees, chapter six and verse 18. Look at this, brothers and sisters. In second Maccabees, chapter six and verse 18. Watch this. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6 and verse 18. Eleazar, one of the principal scribes and an aged man and of a well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. Read on. But he, choosing rather to die gloriously. He chose rather to die gloriously than put some swine in his mouth. You think that the Most High is going to allow this to happen and then say, oh no, we can eat pork now? Read on. Than to live stained with such an abomination. Oh man, come on. Spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment. Yes. As it behooved, as it behooved them to come, that are resulted to stand out against such thing as are not lawful for love of life to be tasted. Right. So this man chose what? To be put to death rather than eat pork. Do y'all understand that? Give me, I want to show y'all another thing. Give me, stay right there in chapter eight. Read it from the top. Watch this. Second Maccabees chapter 8 and verse 1. Then Judas Maccabeus. No. 7. Sorry. Chapter 7. Chapter 7 and verse 1. It came to pass also 
that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh. You see that? Against the law to taste wine's flesh. They didn't want to do it. Come on. And were tormented with scourges and whips. They were beaten because they didn't want to do it. Read. But one of them that spake first said thus, What wouldest thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to, rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. You see that? People were ready to die rather than put that damn pork in their mouth. Y'all better get your minds right. Okay, watch what Christ did to check this out. Give me Matthew chapter eight. Watch this. We just going to give you little examples since you still want to eat pork. I don't like no bacon, but pork bacon because it, it, it's more crispy. Yeah, you're going to get put to damn death. Understand that you brothers and sisters. Come on. Give me uh, the book of Matthew chapter eight. Let's start in verse 30. Give me 30 to 32. Watch this y'all. The book of Matthew chapter eight and verse 30. 29 verse 29 and behold they cried out saying what have we to do with thee jesus the son of god art thou come hither to torment us before the time because these are the what the evil angels they're saying they know that their time is now they're ruling the earth right now so they say they saw christ they were like are you coming to torment us before the time come on and there was a good way off from them and a herd of many swine feeding. And a, and a fall from them was what? A bunch of swine feeding. Read. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffering us to go away into the herd of swine. So they wanted to what? They wanted their spirits to be put into the herd of swine. Because they knew that Israel what? That was a dirty, unclean meat to eat. So they said, put our spirits in the swine. Read on. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of the swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. That's it. You understand that? And as you read on, it tells you because those swines was possessed by devils, they ran off. That's why Christ said, okay, no problem. Go ahead in the swine. Because they knew that swine in terms of it was, it was a dirty animal. Okay? It was a dirty animal. So some of you may say, guess what? What does that prove? How, do you, how are you still saying that we can't eat pork in this time? Because you don't want to accept the scriptures. So let's go into Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, and do what? We're going to look at the prophecy of the end times of when Christ is going to come back. And let's see if eating pork is all right. Let me get there with you, bro, before you start reading. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, brothers and sisters. You have the same Bible at home. The same Bible that you got laying up on, um, on grandma's. Uh, um, on dresser, it's all dusty up on your uh, underneath your bed, and you have it on your car. What, they got it on the dashboard in the car with the dust all over it, thinking that that's going to keep you safe when you're driving around. You better learn that thing. The Lord said, "What? Study to show yourself approved before God." You understand that? So what? We got Isaiah chapter sixty-six. Give me verse seventeen. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter sixty-six and verse seventeen. Start in fifteen and read through seventeen. I'm verse sorry. fifteen. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. See that? That's the day of the Lord when Christ is coming back. It ain't going to be no hugs and kisses that day. I'm going to tell you straight. He's coming back to lay some people down, the wicked of our people, first, and then the rest of the nation is going to get put in order. Come on. For by fire and by his sword would the Lord plead with all flesh. That pleading with all flesh is not, please, please follow my laws. No, it's putting you to death. Read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Come on. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. Come on. Eating swine's flesh. Doing what? Eating swine's flesh. Those of you in that day that will be eating swine's flesh. Come on. And the abomination. All the other things you're not supposed to be eating. Come on. And the mouse. And the mouse. The rodent. A lot of you down south like to, what, run over a damn um, possum. Okay, and talk about road killing, y'all go home and eat it. That's the damn mouse. That's what it's talking about. Rodents, read. Shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Y'all understand that? So in that last days, if you get caught eating swine, you're getting put to death. Meaning what? Right now, we ain't supposed to be eating no damn swine. You understand that? So stay away from the swine. Stay away from all of the animals that the Lord told you to stay away from. You crab in Maryland, you having your what? The crab uh, fest. Uh, the lobster, the clams, and all that garbage, pig, and the rest of it, stay away from it, okay? And with that, 
we're going to say shalom. This has been Captain Zakai and Officer Ira, the, the Dietary Lord. This is Israel United in Christ. Find us at IsraelUnite.org and any YouTube channel. Just put in IUIC on YouTube and you're going to find uh, many lessons teaching about various topics. All right, shalom. Most high Christ bless you all. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.